All right, Doc. So, you know, people talk about city versus CIF, and the dynamic of city versus CIF has shifted quite a bit. I would say more the most probably in the last ten to fifteen years in mm-hmm. terms of um, just the dynamic with regards to talent. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on just the, the state of sports in Southern California when you look at um, city section versus uh, CIF section? Let's start, let's start with high school uh, basketball, boys basketball. Um, well, I am of the city section. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Um, I played at uh, Palisades and Washington Prep. And uh, we always felt like there was a certain toughness coming out of the city like make, being all city meant something mm-hmm. uh, but I think that nowadays the level of talent has transferred so much and the resources at uh, some of these um, private schools are, are so much more um, what robust than than other schools that you can't really afford to keep a top tier kid mm-hmm. in the city anymore mm-hmm. um, it's not to the best interest of the kid mm-hmm. uh, a couple of years back, we did a football camp at Washington, and we had a kid who was a football player at Locke. And uh, we were talking to his dad, and uh, his dad was like, yeah, I'm gonna have him do two years at Locke, and then uh, I think he had just finished his uh, sophomore year at Locke, and he was gonna go to St. John Bosco and play wide receiver. But the toughness he got from Locke transferred over to Bosco. I think he signed at Arizona or Cal. Oh, wow. Right, and the plan worked, and I think that if you were doing it now, that might be a good plan. But, you know, as far as awareness to what's going on in the city, resources, uh, training, uh, things like that, it just doesn't compare. Do you feel like the, the toughness level is, is higher than mm, at this no. versus CF? Or, or what I, do you mean by that? I feel like there's a certain level of, well, it used to be, right? It used to be a certain level of grit okay. and pride. Okay. that came from playing in the city. It's certain games that you're not going to get in the CIF that you get in the city. Like, if you perform in that Crenshaw Dorsey game, that's different. Is that uh, a socioeconomic thing? Or, or like, when, when you say great, what, what do you think is driving I, I, that? I, some of those games were the toughest games that, you know, I can imagine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Crenshaw at Washington, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who's on the court. Mm-hmm. You know, we won, we beat them my junior year, and they literally rushed the court. Mm-hmm. The the level of pride in the communities is different than what you're going to get when you go to like Sherman Oaks, or when you go to Tua Sierra Canyon. Now, don't get me wrong, the level of competition at those schools are much higher, mm-hmm. but the pride and community and what the city means, um, you're just not going to get that feel at any other school. You're talking about like manual arts versus. Fremont? Are you kidding me? Though, mm-hmm. just the area brings a certain air mm-hmm. um, that you're not going to get, mm-hmm. and maybe it's better that you don't get it. Mm-hmm. But you know, the intensity and and the the excitement of those games, bro, they last a lifetime. You know, I can I can attest to that a bit. Uh, I I went to a CIF school, uh, Bishop Montgomery. But I'm from Carson, mm-hmm. uh, and so Carson is a city school. Right. Gardena, Banning. Right. Right. And so the kids that I grew up with, playing Pop Warner with, playing Slam and Jam with, mm-hmm. they went to Carson. They went to Banning. They went right. to Gardena. Right. And those same kids, uh, uh, while I was in high school, they took city championship. My teammates mm-hmm. from playing at the Carson Colts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I can speak to that 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 skill level back then, and that grit, and that city pride, because mm-hmm. it's like you, you know, you from you from the neighborhood, mm-hmm. and then you put on for the neighborhood type thing. And I feel as though at CIF level, it has become more of a sort of cross pollination of kids coming in from all over. Right. There's a lot. I feel like there's a lot more recruiting that happens at yes. at uh, CIF versus city. Yes. Uh, I don't know if that's a budget thing or I don't know what's driving that, but you definitely have a lot more kids from different parts of the of LA at a CIF school versus the neighborhood kids mm-hmm. at a city school, which does uh, lends itself to an interesting sort of co- 
competitive dynamic. You, you are right. Mm -hmm. You are right. And the honest truth is, is that during my time, and I'm late 90s, mm -hmm. the top kids in the area were from the city, mm -hmm. but were going to schools outside of the city mm -hmm. for opportunity, mm -hmm. which I can't be mad at. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the same opportunity at Jordan High School, even if you average 50 points a night. Than you're talking about L.A. Jordan. L.A. Jordan, right, right, right. right. Then you're going to get at even like uh, Muir. You'll get a different right. look at Muir right. than you will at Jefferson. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the same. Um, and you know, if you have as a parent, if you've invested, but it wasn't always like that. Though. It wasn't always like yeah. that. Um, but it is now. Right. It definitely. It is. definitely yeah. is now. Yeah. Um, and um, but if you've invested in, and it's expensive now to train your kid to play basketball low key right baseball you know football you might be able to get away with it right those two highly skilled sports uh -huh. you uh you know as a parent you have to pay right and if you've made you've made that investment i feel like you kind of have to send your kid to that school where the, they have the best resources mm -hmm. and as much as you know we remember the good old days mm -hmm. you know nowadays you know, if your your kid has, you have to give them an opportunity to go out there and see if they. Yeah, have like you, you have to because uh, youth sports, high school sports, has become so competitive. If you are not investing into their training in middle school, you're you're they're kind of at a disadvantage. But you know what? Though? I think a lot of that stems from the fact that kids aren't as active as they used to be. Okay. Uh, because. You like guys like you and I. We developed our athleticism from jumping fences, mm -hmm. riding bikes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. running from dogs. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Playing outside yeah. all, all all day, day long. long. Kids don't yeah. play outside no more. No, no. It's even tough to get a kid to show up to an open run if it's not like a official training, mm -hmm. or if it's not some kind of like a private workout. Mm -hmm. um, which you know, and I think you can kind of see it when you look at. Uh, the type of player that we're putting out from California these days. Mm -hmm. We're putting out kids who have the bag, right? Mm -hmm. You give them a one-on-one -on -one situation, they can show you all of the move. Punch, mm -hmm. cross, cross, around the back. Mm -hmm. um, but when you talk about fundamental basketball, ball reversal, right. down screen, right. curls, right. playing when you don't have the basketball, things right. like that, I think our kids are going to struggle. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a just a difference and you know some of those changes we should embrace but we should also see where we can get better um, and try to check those boxes to see uh, where we can actually you know get some more mm -hmm. top tier kids too and like not the top tier kid I'm thinking of that middle of the road kid the top tier kid from California is gonna go mm -hmm. but that middle of the road kid you know um, if a, if a school like Boise State mm -hmm. can get enough of them mm -hmm. they can be nationally competitive absolutely a hundred percent and we've seen that before. A hundred percent in football and basketball. And, on both sides. and when you talk about transfer portal and you talk about things like that, I think that the uh, the equity among the teams, mm -hmm. you could like San Diego State went to the Final Four. Facts. Are you kidding? Right. You know, uh, you know, and they had the they, that team had veteran pick players picked out of the portal. You know, the, it, it's equal across the board nowadays. So then you talk about the California kid. Um, I think if we can invest more time in skill building of fundamentals, mm -hmm. um, along with you know having a kid who who has the bag, I think that we can put out a, a, a special player on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's a good point. You see a lot of that um, on the football side in the sense that a lot of kids from California, when they when they go to college from, uh, from California, they're play ready day one yes uh, but some of the kids you know they might have a, from other states they might have a little bit more physical acumen but sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to get up to speed mm -hmm. on the the regimen right. and 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 the skill set right uh, but you know in terms of their physicality their kids from Texas and Florida they got it they might just play off of just their sheer athleticism right. because a lot of times those kids are more athletic right right there's right. multitude right. of reasons as to why you are right but to your point about California, a lot of times those kids just have a deeper bag in terms of their skill set, so they show up ready to play. Um, but it's it's just interesting in that you know uh, the there's just the overall preparation 
at the youth sports level, high school sports level, it's just different in general than what it used to be. And it's, it's just fascinating to me that you even have nuances as it relates to like the, the type of school that they went to, going back to the point of city versus CIF. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. There's just all of these unspoken nuances that, um, for the most part, impact the, the, the direction and the upside of a kid. Mm -hmm. and you, you, you are totally right. Um, and you know, there are coaches in the city uh, who have had a long, um, they have huge backgrounds in preparing guys to play at the next level. There's certain names that come to mind, and some of these guys have retired. But my first start, we saw him at uh, Rolling Hills, where he was at Fairfax. Harvey Katani, mm -hmm. legendary coach. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I personally feel you get a kid from Fairfax, he won't be the toughest kid in the world, but he'll understand how to play the game, right. which is valuable. Right. Uh, it was a guy over at Taft, I can't think his name, I think he just left. But the kids that come from Taft, and these are city schools, they understand spacing, they understand when to go, they understand counters and, and, and things like that. Um, Azam at Westchester, who's been going for a little while, you can't deny the run that he made, you know, with those 2000 teams. And even before that, he made another run uh, back in the early, I want to say like 92, mm -hmm. when he had like Gumby and all those names. Mm -hmm. Those guys just knew how to play basketball. Right. Um, so there are some coaches there, but I think they're, you know, today, uh, if you are a top tier coach and you want to be paid according to what the market mm -hmm. says you should be paid, you can't go to the city. You just can't. They're not going to pay you what you're worth. Just bottom line. A guy like Katani, as much as he built Fairfax into a powerhouse, Fairfax can't uh, pay him the same money that Rolling Hills Prep yeah, that's true. is going to pay him. Yeah, and true. he should be paid. Right. He's that good at what he does. So, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to get the same level of preparation from the kid that you would get from the city. You might get the same level of athleticism. But is he going to be polished and ready to go? Rarely, mm -hmm. unless he comes from one of these, you know, programs that have long-standing mm -hmm. coaching like that. You know, um, but you know, well, we don't have much time today. So, as as a closing piece of advice, um, what what would you tell the parent that you know has their kid at a city school? They want to give them the best opportunity. They don't necessarily have all the means and resources for all the extra and training extra training and so forth like what advice do you give them to give their kid the best shot I think first you have to reflect on the environment you have to understand that Southern California sports is big business it's not what it used to be mm -hmm. you have to understand the landscape secondly I think that you have to have a honest appreciation for what your kid is. Mm -hmm. You have to be honest with them. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you have some parents say, hey, my kid is awesome. And you see the kid play and it's like, okay, I don't doubt that the kid is a great kid, but is he ready to go play under the lights at CR Canyon tonight? Mm -hmm. I don't think he is. Um, but that doesn't mean that he can't develop into a solid player, mm -hmm. but the level of competition there, even in practice, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's ready to compete at that level on a mm -hmm. regular basis. So I think you got to really know who your kid is. And then I think that you got to start early. Mm -hmm. um, the kids now in basketball, skill-wise, they're far beyond at least what I, used, what I saw when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, having an honest assessment of who your kid is, understanding what the environment is, and then preparing them for where, for high school basketball in Southern California is a big deal. Um, and then, you know, getting out there and seeing how they do against the top tier guys. If your kid is awesome and he gets on the court against a, uh, against a guy who's ranked, mm -hmm. which, you know, sometimes guys are ranked for different reasons, yeah. or you gotta take that personal. Like, Facts. you know, especially Facts. in Southern California, bro, we, we're, trying to get, we're trying to eat out here, right. you know? Right. Right. And they're not giving scholarships to freshmen the way they used to. Right. What's stopping a coach from going to the portal and grabbing a junior who has experience versus a freshman who hasn't even seen the court. This guy's junior, he might not play, but he can contribute in practice, right? right? So you gotta really understand what the landscape right. is, right. and it's not what it used to be back in the days. You're in Southern California. This is the Mecca, or one of the Meccas of high school sports. 
So as a parent, you know, you need to really know what you're stepping into and, and, and take account of that and make decisions as such. We well, appreciate you, Doc. Thank right. you guys for tuning in, and we will see you on the next episode. All righty. Take it easy.